I, I was aware of A.D. Winans, Al Winans, in Los Angeles, um, knew his poetry, and uh, um, my friends down there, including Bukowski, and we used to talk about this guy, A.D. Winans, and, and the name sound, we decided the name sounded tough. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he said, you know, Al's, it, it, we, we decided Al was tough and A.D. was tough. But Winans really got us. And that, you know, I mean, in this working class city up north, you know, and uh, uh, where all this poetry happened. And then um, A.D. got in touch with me um, uh, for a special Charles Bukowski issue of Second Coming, the great journal he had. I used to say it was, it was multicultural before there was multicultural culturalism. And I have to say it was naturally so. And also quite open to gay people and, and people of all walks of life with, without any fanfare or any commentary about this. Everybody was mixed in. He was born here and raised here, so he had that sort of a natural born cosmopolitan thing going. And uh, so I contributed this magazine, and I came up to San Francisco. My first reading in the city was, what was with Al at the old Malvina coffee shop. It was, it was on Green and uh, Grant, a little, uh, still there in the building. A lot of you know, some of you know the place. And uh, it was upstairs. It looked like a boxing ring where the readings were. And uh, so Al and I read there, and that was just a great introduction uh, for me to... Uh, being a public person in, in the literary community in the Bay Area. So what I did is I, I'm, I'm going to read a poem of Al's, but I wrote a poem for him. This is the second one. He found one that I wrote 12 years ago. And uh, that's something that uh, we all do for one another. We, we love doing it for a, another poet who's alive. So because, you know, one starts writing elegies the older you get <laughs> <laughs> for friends who are gone. And uh, it's actually quite difficult. Yeah. I have a book called Whitman's Wild Children where I have port uh, portraits of all these writers. And now they, uh, three quarters of them can't contradict the things I said <laughs> <laughs> because they're gone. But this guy is very much here and is going to be around, I assure you, for well, a, a long, long time. <laughs> I mean, look at him. Look at the difference. I mean, he's got his slim and, you know. <laughs> he complains all the time. He's just almost as bad as me, but not quite. But I didn't sleep. I didn't this and that. But he's just going all the time. Like wish, you know, so look at the poems. Al, the docks are old, old. And the sun so young. So elder you and I have become. The moon is a plate of white gold, and the poems continue to whisper before they shriek. That's how it is, old pal, fellow poet, son of the city, child in the working class. So true to the plain spoken word and the art of writing. So clear as the dream glows and time allows no mercy. So youthful these trees that walk up and down our streets. The flowers bloom over our cool summer and you make the time for the center of a poem to grow across fog and empty light taking on the grand themes of light, shadows, and dark noon. Our companions in the poem slipping away, yet they are reborn in remembrance. How you sing so clear and walk quite focused. The city strives out of your lines, six down 76 streams of thought. You must remember our first reading in the old Malvina Cafe, the city still a worker's town, still some of the old rigs of this democracy, the shades of Whitman's beard. Yes, so much remained, and now we're glowing toward the art of it all, down the rift and into the palace, far distant yet ever more near. Your Panama poems, how young and just beginning, 
your jazz songs, those memories of how it went and why we go, the way you sustain down long avenues to land's end, far distant, yet ever more near. Size of the print there. Right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that small? Well, I've gone from yeah, I've gone from 12 point to 14 to 16 to 18. We'll see how far I can go. If another 15 years will be a 36. <laughs> Fort Panama <laughs> memories. <laughs> Panama City. Could have been any slum city in America run by corrupt police and politicians. But when you add the American troops sent there to safeguard the people, it was worse than any slum you might imagine. Naked children playing in the street, 12-year-old boys selling pictures of naked women being mounted by dogs or selling their 10-year-old sisters. Taxi drivers taking you to the donkey show or to the home of young whores while less than 10 miles away in the American Canal Zone, its hometown USA, the Governor's Ball, U.S. civilian police, white-skinned women sipping coffee and tea around Force TV selling the American dream. Thank you. Wow.